How's it going, everybody? Hope you're all having a great day or night whenever you open this video up. So what do you know, another day, another stupid-ass controversy about a video game that has absolutely nothing to do with the game itself. Yes, I'm of course referring to Atomic Heart and how it's apparently got a really stupid-ass controversy. On the same level as Hogwarts Legacy, if not worse, honestly. But it's not quite as widespread because it doesn't appeal to the Me Too shit. So I had to do a little bit of digging to find out what it is that people have their panties in a bunch over this time. And apparently there are some pretty big panties in a bunch over this, so... Yeah. And before I can even get into that, I gotta say, this controversy didn't even really market the game that well, as much as the Hogwarts Legacy shit did, because I genuinely didn't even hear about this game until G-Man Reviews did a review of it. And have I played the game personally? No. Because I'd be broke right now. I don't need to hear the perspective of a bunch of brokies who can't even fucking buy it anyway. I don't want your tips. I want you to shut the fuck up! But from everything I've seen in the trailers and in a few videos here and there, it looks kind of neat. Another one of those alternate history stories like the Wolfenstein reboot, Jinro, fucking Bioshock technically, which I didn't even consider how close it was to Bioshock until a friend pointed it out and I was like, huh, it's kind of an interesting connection. Even more interesting by the fact that those are the two games G-Man Reviews has reviewed recently. But from everything I've seen, it looks cool, but I've heard a few things here and there, mainly about the dialogue and there are some design decisions that are frankly weird, but I haven't heard enough to say definitively whether it's good or bad. So far, it's just pretty eh, which is another odd thing in common with Hogwarts Legacy in the fact that it's pretty mediocre overall, looks pretty, runs well for the most part, and that's about it, just pretty mid. But onto that little controversy, it's honestly even stupider than a transphobe getting a few thousand bucks for every 10,000 copies sold. No, instead, it's the fact that the developers have to pay taxes to a pretty awful country running a fucking war. Yeah, so we gotta punish the game for that. You know, just like I did with Hogwarts, I could bring up the hypocrisy of people complaining about bad people making money off the sales of this game and such. Although it's much more indirect than it was there. And I could bring up examples of bad things they've supported indirectly too, but you know what? I don't want to be that much of a negative Nancy. So let's bring a little bit more positivity into this and give a round of applause to literally every person in this conversation. Whether you boycott or Atomic Heart for this reason, or if you're just on the sidelines like me, Let's all give ourselves a round of applause for doing something as basic as buying things from Walmart. You know, it doesn't seem like much, but there are a lot of people who really appreciate us buying things from Walmart. You know who especially appreciates it? The Chinese government that made literally every product in that store. You know, without you having to throw away $5 just for some bread and tea, then the Chinese government, well, they never would have been able to inter the Uyghur Muslims. They never would have been able to overtake Hong Kong. They would never be able to send balloons over to America. None of that. So you know what? Thank you for shopping at Walmart today. And apparently this has creeped into the discussion about the game's art style and such with those weird ass robots and how one of them has a crown braid which is supposedly meant to be a mockery of the fucking Ukrainian politician, whatever her name is. Instead of, you know, being a reference to crown braids in general. Like fuck, I didn't know Game of Thrones was mocking that Ukrainian politician lady. But oh well, future designers, you can't have that hairstyle at all without it being somehow related to this war that has absolutely nothing going on with this game. That's right, you heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. This Ukrainian politician lady's braid has essentially become the new Hitler stash. Can't nobody have it no more. Sucks to suck, I guess. But then we get on to the big one that the Ukrainian government is apparently wanting this game to be pulled from every storefront. Because apparently Ukraine is so afraid of gamers rising up and supporting the Russian government by purchasing this video game. Even though they have to split the profits between American companies like Microsoft, Valve, so on and so forth. So at the end of the day, Munfish is only getting about 30 to 40% of every copy sold. Meaning with every copy sold, they're making a whopping 18 to $30, and that's just American. How much that's going to be on the exchange rate, I don't know. I'm not going to do that math for you. All I do know is they're not making a whole lot, and all that money, it's got to pay the taxes of the government. And if paying the taxes of whatever government it is that's doing something bad is so controversial now, then fuck, I hope to see the federal prison population go up by quite a lot this year. Shit like this is why I like making fun of these terminally online takes because they just reek of people who haven't had their first job yet. And seeing stupidity like this reaping into the Ukrainian government tells me that maybe they got a few stupid people they need to get out of their government first, before they worry about what video games are profitable over in Russia. Because I highly, highly doubt that whatever money they make from that is going straight into the bombing of their playgrounds and hospitals, and it's instead going into the electric bill of the development studio. Because shocker here, most of the innocent Russian citizens don't really like the war and don't want it, but they have literally no choice but to let it carry on and hope that some kind of peaceful resolution can be made. But do I think that this little request from Ukraine is going to go through with any of the game companies? I don't think all of them are going to do it, obviously, but I think some of them will for the good press and such. My money's either on Sony or maybe Valve, 
Microsoft absolutely will not because they need all the sales they can get after all the bullshit they've had going on. And as far as the other two, it would still be completely stupid, but if they did cut it out, it wouldn't be that much of a loss. But not that much of a loss is kind of different when you look at the current condition of the game industry where not as many people are spending as much money as they were in the past two years. Because shocker, everybody has to go back to work now and they can't spend all day on the couch. Which is why we're seeing so many price hikes on consoles and games themselves, so... So you know what, kudos to Munfish for keeping this at $60 for the minimum cost. And obviously nobody should be proud of the idea of Ukraine wanting people to be robbed of a video game just because of a certain country profiting off of it in the most minor of ways through taxation. Just as it was fucked up for all the Russian people to be robbed of the basic infrastructures and such when all the companies pulled out last year, and especially all their games being locked out of their Steam library except for whatever was installed, it was fucked up there, and it's fucked up now. Not to mention the industry shills that have picked up on this story and said that yes, we should ban it because poor innocent Ukraine deserves all the wins they can get. You know, call me crazy, but I just have to ponder this little question here. If we're gonna punish games because of geopolitical situations completely out of their control, because terrible people are going to be making a little bit of money from every sale of said game, and they're going to use that money to violate human rights and such, then, uh, how come there wasn't a fraction of this energy put towards Tencent and all the games they put out while China was carrying out the Uyghur genocide? Everybody singing with me now. I really miss my Uyghur. Can't say it with a hard R, but I really miss my Uyghur. Makes you think, huh? Selective outrage at its finest. But yeah, that's all there really is surrounding this stupid-ass controversy with Atomic Heart and such. Again, the game kind of just sounds kind of mid, so I'd expect them to fully lean into this controversy in some way, shape, or form. That way they can get a little bit more outrage buys like they did with Hogwarts, but so far Munfish has tried to distance themselves because that's kind of intelligent, but at the same time, outrage marketing clearly works. But oh well, they can do whatever the fuck they want. As for me, well, I'm going to see how this all plays out and wait for a price drop on the game. That way I can pick it up at some point, if it does turn out to be better than mid. But for now, this is about as much interest as I have in this game, and I kind of want to put a little bit of distance because people are wanting to lollify the fucking Robo Twins, so... Yeah, it's going to get weirder from here. But by all means, let me know what you think of Atomic Heart and this whole situation in the comments down below. If you have any ideas for future videos and such, hit me up on Discord. Link is in the description. And as always, I will talk to you all later. <laughs> you know what the problem is? What? You got it set to M for mini, when it should be set to W for- White powder! Did you just say white powder? Yeah, I'm on Fraulein.